Hold on, let me put, let me put another light on. Hello and welcome to Racers Now. We're off to an absolute flying start as SD gets up out of his seat and tries to put a light on. Anything could happen here. You're going to be here this week mainly from SD because I've got no... Oh my goodness gracious. I've got no um, selections. It could be one of the worst Saturdays in the calendar. We've had meetings called off all over the show. There's going to be inspections at Utoxeter and Kelso and Curra's Heavy and Kempton or Weber might be the only thing on on Saturday. Um, so it's a good job that Musselboro is on Friday and SD is attending at Musselboro. So most of your selections are going to come from there. As always, we will show the weekly total after two weeks of myself versus SD. And I'm still in front. That's two weeks out of two. Still in front. Let's hope that I can stay there for the rest of the season. Yes, we're in a loss, but we're going to turn it around. I had a short head, 20 to 1 second short head beaten at Maidan last week, SD. You would have been a long way behind had that short head been reversed. Well, if my auntie had balls, she'd be my uncle. Exactly. Right, let's um, crack on the... On. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to say, whilst we wouldn't want you to put bets up for the sake of it, you are what is technically termed a bloody pussy. You haven't even looked. You said to me, look, there's a perfectly decent card at, at, at Kempton on Saturday. Um, it's all weather. They want to, you know... Well, it's all weather, but it's all it's all very well. You 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 know you bet on all weather last week. No, Maidan. There was no all weather last week for me. Uh, was there no well that bloody muck? Anyway, it got beat. I got closer to you. I had a profitable week. The tide has turned. So there we are. Um, just some news. So let's just quickly, quickly go through it. Yep. Weatherby abandoned tomorrow. Musselburgh currently soft, 15 to 20 mil of rain forecast. Bill Farnsworth thinks it'll be on. Have you seen Bill Farnsworth on Twitter? He's gone transparent. I think they've AI'd him into a hurdle or they've AI'd the hurdle there. I'll see him tomorrow. I, this new transparent Bill Farnsworth's brilliant. If only he'd been so transparent about the inspection last week at Musselburgh. Um, let me move on to Saturday. What a mess. Uh, you talked to quote, need the better end of the forecast, are inspecting at two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. It wouldn't actually surprise me if you talked to was on. They may miss the worst of the rain. I think they're just about raceable. Kelso were just about raceable, but realistically, you know, their forecast between 15 and 25 mil of rain. They're gonna struggle. Okay, we then move to Sunday. It's going all finals weekend. Um, Carlisle's heavy soft in places probably somewhere between 10 and 20 mil of rain forecast, that's in the balance, there's a there's an awful meeting at Bath um, which is soft heavy in places and nobody gives a shit about it and it's soft heavy in places at Exeter so where will I be this weekend? I'll be at Musselburgh um, tomorrow um, I'll be at Utoxter if it's on I'll be at Kelso if you talk to us off, and if they're both off, I'll trundle down to Kempton, um, and then back up north, hopefully for Carlisle on Sunday, and if that's off, we'll go to Exeter. What a committed man. What a committed man. Um, imagine going to Exeter there and back from the outskirts of North Manchester on a Sunday. That is some commitment, SD. Um, right. So we're going to have one bet at Kempton, then are you on Saturday? And I think you are looking at this um, London middle distance, Rosebury, something or other handicap. Yeah, th this used to be, this and the Queen's Prize, which is later on, um, these used to be really nice races on the turf. Obviously, it's now all weather. It's a fair old prize, this. Um, 51 grand. I've got to say, um, Goldstone's horses haven't quite been 100%. I'm not saying they're they're running dreadfully, but they're not. This one used not... to be with God's, Gosden, did it not? I, no, I'm on about in Tiso, which is joint favourite. Um, of course, in the authorised colours, a 2007 Derby winner. Um, I do much prefer Ilda Rovian. I think they think this is a lot better than a handicapper. Uh, it was a non-runner last year in the Ormond, um, which of course is is a Group Three, and it it, it ran six. Um, in I think that is the John Porter, but I will. Um, no, it's the Aston Park. He ran six in the Aston Park last year. Look, off a mark of ninety three, this thing won doing handstands on its second, uh, on its second run last year at Wolverhampton. It, it won perfectly well at Lingfield before that. 
I think a mark of 93 probably underestimates it. Always seen the lads on. You know. Maximum field of 14. And like you say, SD, a good prize, to be fair. A good prize, even though I have refused to even look at the all-weather. But um, when the flat season proper gets going, and we're still two weeks away from that, I'll be all in. Don't You're a dinosaur. Know. I can't wait for your Grand National. Don't forget, viewers, Monday, get through yeah. every runner in the National. Yeah, we're going to attempt to do that. That could be uh, a big a big piece of work we're taking on. Right, so there's only one selection sat there. It is Old Herovian. 9-2 to two available SD. Um, you're doing a lot of your efforts this week at Musselburgh, so on you go. Well, uh, yeah, I'll just say I'm not looked at the Kelso card because I think it's gone for a burden. No chance. Absolutely no chance based on the forecast. I really hope it's wrong. Lovely track, Kelso, but and it, it, it did look a pretty good card, but I can't see that being on. Uh, you tossed a small field, so it's better to look... Um, at Musselburgh tomorrow, good card up uh, up in East Lothian, isn't it? Um, and which race are we start? Sorry, viewers, I've got I've got my four year old daughter's iPad here, um, and I've not a bloody clue how to work it. So bear with, bear with. You've um, got an we'll iPhone. Try... You've got an iPhone. You've had an iPhone for as long as I've ever known you. Well, you can't work yeah, an but iPad. That's used to record this, you know. <laughs> How did you get on at Musselburgh last week? You know, your Easter weekend where you travelled all the way up to Musselburgh um, and, you know exactly and sacrificed, you yeah, sacrificed they didn't, they didn't going to Haydock, your local track, um, to go all the way to Musselburgh. Uh, Haydock was on, of course, viewers, and uh, Musselburgh was off. Now, they did say Musselburgh's never been abandoned for waterlogging. I'm pretty sure. I was trying to find this. <laughs> they did abandon Good Friday about six or seven years ago. About a week early. I might be wrong with that. Maybe he was right in the comments. Them. Harriet Graham was clerking then. Right, come on then. 505 at Musselburgh. You're playing oh, in this Lady Buttons yes, Mears the... Hurdle handicap. The Lady Buttons final. Yes. Yeah. Um, I do like similar story here. I, I just thought it ran a very eye catching race, a really eye catching race for. Um, and in a novice hurdle, in a mare's novice at Kelso, it was, let's be honest, it was never put in the race behind Why Not. Ran, uh, ran really quite well that day. They then ran it over 2 2 at Kelso, didn't run so well, but it did run, run all right last time at air. Now, fifth or sixth is probably a bit unfair as to what the uh, the final finishing position was because. What what happened was he palpably didn't stay. I think I think the soft ground is going to catch a lot of horses out tomorrow. Um, this thing goes in a bog. Now it's not usual for it to be a bog at Musselburgh, but unfortunately, you know, it's it's just kept on bloody raining and raining and raining. And I think similar story is feasibly treated on the on the Kelso effort. And at 18 to 1, it's, it's no bad thing, Sam Coulter being off this horse and 16, Sean Quinlan taking 16 over. 16 four places. Uh, that's what I've got you down as. Right, OK. Well, at six, I've got, got you 18 extra place. on my... I've got you an extra place. Just a sec. 18, Paddy Power, four places. OK. I've stolen two points, viewers. What a time to be alive. So I thought this was, I thought that was interesting. The, the other general point about Musselburgh tomorrow, there are lower grade horses, similar story, for example, is rated 97, who in the nicest possible way may not have been putting it in all winter because horses of those these sorts of abilities aren't going to get many chances at £30,000 races. So it is just worth just looking a little bit outside the box. I wouldn't be surprised if we had some shots. Going on to the 540, I've not got a selection in the race. Golden Mavericks absolutely lobbed in on its hurdles, on its uh, on its flat form. Um, whether I'd be back in it at 13 to 8, it is, of course, Big Paul Keeley's play of the day. Another great race in post bit of parlance. Um but we move we move on to something at a far more tasty price in the um which which finals this I get them all mixed up. It's a great initiative, the Go North series. The Brindisi Breeze final. Brindisi Breeze um 
was of course ridden by Campbell Gillis, who's who's never went not with us anymore at the festival for for Lucinda Russell many many years ago. It'd be over ten years ago now that. And this uh, this Cardamon Hill. I was at Mus Musselboro when it last ran. It was never put in the race. It got a very sympathetic ride. It started off over here, off a mark of 119. OK, that was over fences. It's, um, it's won a maiden hurdle at Tremorin Island on heavy ground. It's down now to a mark of 107. Diane Sayer has had winners at this meeting before. You've been warned. Now down to this mark of 107. Last time was so sympathetic. Connor O'Farrell, you know, the handbrake was barely off. You can't help but think they've laid it up out for this. And at 16, you've got to play it. This is where I have got you an extra place. 16 general at three places, 14 for four places. Are you happy to take the 14 with an extra place? No, we go 16. Oh, right. OK, I will get... No, one thing I would say to you, viewers... Don't get jibbed on these extra place markets. Good God, I mean. My friend got um, wanted a better cash rick in the week, and there were two who were way overpriced. So we had 30 quid each way and one at 33s. It's six to one. It burst out the stools. 365 got rid of his account. I mean, there's a lot of publicity at the moment on how cack some of these online bookmakers are. AK Bets actually tried to highlight it with some fun race titles tomorrow at Fontwell, and some miserable bastard has stopped it. What was an example well, of one of the race titles? Well, I think it's you can speak to humans, handicap hurdle, we massive lay a bet. Tech, we lay a bet. I mean, what's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with right. it at all. But some miserable bastard sat in Stoke has probably stopped it. Right, there you go then. Cardamon Hill, 16 to 1 each way, three places. On to this 640 then, SD. No doubt you can tell us the nice name title of this one. Well, I could, but, uh, but this bloody iPad. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. It's the Go North Sea Pigeon Hurdle Handicap uh -huh. Series Final. And I'm sure everyone remembers Sea Pigeon. And if you want to know SD's selection because his uh, eye can't no, work on iPad, um, Mac the Man is the selection um, available at 11 to 1 each way, four places. And there you go on screen there. Second at air last time, Mr. SD? Yeah, it was second at air. I, I thought there was, a, there was a few plus points for this horse. It's palpably better right-handed, this horse. All its wins, its last win was in 2021. I've always oh. thought this horse has to go right-handed. Um <laughs> Went from Evan Why did it took him three years to work that out? Well, well, Evan Williams to Nick Alexander. And what's Nick Alexander done? He's run it in the four times he's had it. Started <laughs> off with a mark of 110. It's 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 now slid down to 101. Yeah. <laughs> Left-handed. I, I think there might be a bit of scope in that mark. A heavy ground winner and... Um, Reasonably handicapped too. The jockey on it, Kit Alexander, good lad. Nice racing family, the Alexanders, you know. Do you know, Hazel Peplinski is, I think, Nick, who, who, used to, who used to be clerk at Perth and Musselburgh, is Nick Alexander's stepsister. And Sandy Dudgeon, who's the, who's the chief um, steward of the jockey club, or was, is somewhere, somehow in the family. Every Lovely single family. week. SD delivers pointless nostalgia or history lessons or even family tree lessons this week on racing that no one cares about, but SD delivers with great enthusiasm as always. Yes, and you're dressed as some sort of marine camouflaged bloody oik this evening. Right, Mac the Man. On to the 710 then, SD. This has got a normal race title uh, because this is a Class 5 run-of-the-mill by a lump of coal handicap. Yeah, uh, we've mentioned Pronto and Eater on this channel before, and I'll just quickly give you the story again. Ran very well first time up at Aintree in a soft ground bumper. Really hasn't done much since. Um, Ray Green owns it. Ray Green's wife was called Anita, who's sadly no longer with us. So um, this uh, she's bred to be good. And Ian Jardine's back in form. Now, last time at Kelso, which was a long time ago, drifted alarmingly on Betfair just before the off. 
I wouldn't be surprised if they had a punt on her tomorrow. I th certainly think on the strength of those bumper runs, she, she's a hell of a lot better than she's shown today. It's an eight to one I can chance her. Okay, great. And on um, this day, uh, April the 4th, SD is going to be the only man on YouTube or on a blog or on Twitter, whatever, that's going to be putting an anti-post bet up for the National. Not the Aintree National next Saturday where everyone's eyes will be. SD fancies one for the Scottish National and it's a horse that he has tipped before on the channel. Tell me about it. It won, didn't it? Uh, it has won for you before and it's lost for you as well before, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I I think I think Famous Bridge was travelling so well at Haydock. That race hasn't worked out badly at all. And uh, I don't think he's going to get in the National. I have a few quid on him at Daft Price. is like 500. But certainly, you know, he was 139 at Haydock. I thought he ran a respectable race at Cheltenham. I thought the racing post analysis was out. He was just a bit outpaced. I think four miles round here, a bit of cut in the ground for former Scottish national winning trainer Nicky Richards. Um, <laughs> He's gonna have he's gonna have a bloody good chance. Of course, won this race with 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 taking risks. I think the marks ideal, the distance is ideal, the race is ideal. He's an unexposed chaser, owned by Trevor Hemmings. He's he's twenties. I've been nibbling him at bet, on Betfair at about twenty five. But look, I'm not allowed to tell you to bat the horse on the exchange, am I? No, bat the horse on the exchange. But I'm gonna have to settle for twenties. A win only bet on famous bridge. In the right. Scottish National. Well, that'll be in the PL as always, SD. One point win or one point each way. All selections. Right. What's the best bet of this weekend? Then I'm guessing it might be at Musselburgh on Friday. I wouldn't I wouldn't be overly I think that Diane Say a horse, that what's it called? Cardam and Nilo or something. I think yep. that has been that has been laid out for the race. I'm gonna start calling you Tony Calvin because you're bottling these podcasts. Of course, Tony spat his dummy out, ran off, and then uh, gone away. The Go North final, by the way, all weekend. Musselburgh, Kelso, if it's on, and, and Carlisle, you can get yourself a 40 quid ticket. Marvellous value. Mick Walsh will be at Kelso and Carlisle as well for an array of. Mick Walsh needs to start cards. paying me because the amount of shout outs Mick Walsh gets on here I have had a calendar and a couple of pens off him which is good quality but for the amount of coverage did you get he the gets playing on races, cards didn't did, when you yeah, playing the got... playing cards at Cheltenham yeah I took I took the playing cards to Cheltenham was was playing with him in the office at Cheltenham yeah there's my Mick Walsh playing cards here's my Mick Walsh calendar yeah i mean uh, and my pen is somewhere else so yeah probably ran out Mick Walsh's pens a little bit little bit watered <laughs> down <laughs> watered down the Mick Walsh pens. Well, the content here on Racers now is not watered down when we've got SD on that, that is for sure. Right, OK, well, we're going to be back Monday. We're going to try and cover every single potential Grand National runner on Monday. I think there's 54 in there at the moment. Hopefully, a few of them come out on Monday and we're dealing oh, with... Oh, quickly, quickly. Yep, just, some, just some breaking news. What the bloody hell is that horse I gave you on Monday What I think will win at Wolverhampton? This will not go on the P&L. But I think there's one on Monday. Oh, uh, Dawn of Liberation. Dawn of Liberation uh, at Dunstall Park on Monday. You've been told about that. Yeah, right well, over um... the wrong trip at Southall, didn't it? Um, uh, and have a look, by the way. I'm going to give you another one now for your tracker. Uh, what's it called? Aconquagula Mountain or something. It's, <laughs> it's, it's trained by Ian Jardine. I told they ran it over the wrong trip at Newcastle. Honestly, it was it was like having Stevie Wonder on the horse. He, you, I could have given it a better ride, and I'm I'm a you know largely shape, built gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was dreadful. Back over five furlongs, Wolverhampton, somewhere like that. I th I think that horse is handicapped to win for Ian Jardine. So there you are. There's there's two for your bucket and spade brigade. And of course, we'll be back next week for a full preview of the action from Yarmouth. <laughs> and on that note, we'll end it there. Don't speak over my little video clip. Cheerio.